All right, here we go. One last rodeo. So, plate tectonics. Hope you got a grasp of it. Let's kind of bring it home to Arizona. How has it played a part in our statehood, the, our geology here? When we're looking at Arizona, if you travel around Arizona, you know that Phoenix and Tucson and, and Yuma, uh, they all kind of look the same geologic-wise. Right? Flat desert, kind of mountains popping up around. So Phoenix is over in this area, Yuma over here, Tucson down here below my picture. So it all kind of looks the same. And we're all in something called the, the Basin and, and Range Province. Um, but you also know that Flagstaff looks completely different. Flagstaff is up here on the Colorado Plateau, which looks different than, say, if you've ever been to Prescott or Jerome or... Payson, those are all in the trans transition zone. So, you know, depending on where you're at, you know, there is, they look different because of the geology. So, uh, most of uh, the terrain in the Basin and Range province, so that's where we live, that's where Phoenix is located, in what's known as the Basin and Range province, which transcends through a number of different states. But that's where Phoenix is, Tucson, etc. A lot of what you see here, the, the geology is due to plate tectonics, which we'll talk about. Most of the terrain in the Colorado Plateau up here is due to volcanism. A lot of what we see in Flagstaff are volcanoes, and same over here in the White Mountains, but also sedimentation. Uh, that's why the rest of the plateau up here is pretty flat. The Grand Canyon is there due to layers of sedimentary rock. So the geology on the Colorado Plateau is much different than the geology of the Basin and Range Province. The transition zone, well, it's just kind of in between. Go figure. Uh, but let's focus in on the Basin and Range Province because that, you know, it's plate tectonics is the drive, the major driving force behind what we see. I mean, you can argue um, sedimentation, uh, volcanism, that wouldn't be true if it wasn't for plate tectonics. Yes, but that's not kind of the ultimate driving force that shaped the Colorado Plateau. But for the Basin and Range, it definitely is. So uh, Arizona, part of Arizona, uh, lies in the Basin and Range Province. So does parts of Mexico, New Mexico, California, almost all of Nevada, Utah, portions of California, Oregon, Idaho. So, you know, when you drive through, if you've driven from Phoenix to Las Vegas or through Nevada, it looks a lot the same as what you see here in Phoenix because we're all in this Basin and Range Province that kind of formed the same way. So here's what happened. Here's the story. So there was movement along the San Andreas Fault. Once the San Andreas Fault kind of initially started to move, uh, the movement along the San Andreas Fault caused Arizona and some other western states to look the way it did. And here's how. Remember, um, the San Andreas Fault is a, is a, a transform boundary. You've got this side-by-side -side sliding motion. When, that's, when, when, the trans, when the San Andreas Fault kind of began, what that helped to do was release some pressure, release some compression when that's when that what's called strike slip motion along the transform fault. Once that San Andreas movement occurred, it kind of relieved, relieved some pressure. So imagine North America kind of all like bunched up like this. And then once movement uh, off the west coast at the transform boundary began to happen, it's kind of relie relieving some of that tension. Ah, so it allowed, allowed parts of North America to kind of stretch out. So the pressure was kind of released, confining it in, allowing North America to kind of start to kind of split apart a little bit, extend. But also due to that motion of the Pacific Plate, not only did it relieve pressure, it also started to pull and extend on North America some more. As that happened, as the pressure was relieved and that strike slip motion started to pull and tug on North America a little bit, it began to, if we're looking at North America from the side, it began to extend and cause cracks. And as these cracks began to form, stuff began to move. Some material was thrust up, hence the name ranges. Some material kind of fell down in these cracks. Those are the basin, the lower lying areas. The, the crest started to thin out, so mantle material started to well up and actually cause some volcanic activity. 
hence a lot of volcanoes in Arizona. So, uh, but all of this basin and range formation in central and southern Arizona all started because of that motion. So to summarize, there was movement along the San Andreas that caused just this portion, because the San Andreas kind of runs parallel to the basin and range province, caused just this portion of North America to start to stretch and thin. Up here is the Colorado Plateau. You can see that was not affected by this basin and range uh, plate tectonics. So that San, the movement along the San, Andre San Andreas caused the, this portion of the North American plate to stretch and thin out. It helped mantle material to kind of rise up because the plate was thinning, kind of helping the mantle material push up this lighter stuff. The crust began to fracture because it's kind of getting stretched and pushed up from below. And as that crust fractures, some of that material rose up, ranges, like all these mountain ranges, and some of the material dropped down to form these basins. So when you're looking around the Phoenix area, for the most part, not all, not all mountains form this way, not all the mountains in this area form this way, but a great number of them did. For instance, you think of the White Tank Mountains. They run kind of north-south. The Australia Mountains kind of running north-south. So a lot of these north-south running mountains were formed during this time. So it's like you get flat, you know, you get flat desert, mountain range pop up, flat desert, mountain range pop up, flat desert, mountain range pop up from here through Vegas and keep on going all due to this. As that North American plate was stretched and thinned and mantle material came up from below, that crust fractured, some stuff went up, those are the ranges, some stuff went down, those are the basins. That's why we, that's why this area looks the way it does. So that, you know, is the essence of plate tectonics. Um, so we're in the tectonic cycle. So uh, we talked about mantle convection, um, so where this is leading us is uh, as um, plates are moving around, we can talk about volcanism and igneous rocks, later unit. We can talk about earthquakes, later unit coming up. But again, all of this tectonic cycle responsible for C4 spreading, creating new oceanic crusts, of divergent boundaries in some areas, convergent boundaries in others, causing subduction, material going back down in the mantle, melting. In some cases, it creates magma, liquid hot rock below Earth that makes its way up to create volcanoes, um, or as material is subducted, kind of mixes in with the old mantle material, and that cycle starts all over again. So we'll spend the next few units kind of playing around in the tectonic cycle, and then we'll kind of uh, carry that over into the rock cycle, talking about the different types of rocks, igneous, metamorphic, sedimentary rocks, which will carry over and has uh, um, lap, uh, overlap with the hydrologic cycle, the water cycle, and all the things caused because of it. Now, I often get this question, well, if the plates are moving around, well, what's, what's the world going to look like in the future? Excellent question. Nowadays, it's kind of easy because we can just put GPS satellites on, on every point of Earth, figure out which way it's going, and just hit the fast forward button and figure out what's going to happen. So 250 years ago, here you go. Pangea Proxima, approximately what the next whole Earth supercontinent will look like. So uh, North America kind of cruising down towards the equator, South America kind of rotating up, Africa getting really kind of moving up north, kind of pushing Europe uh, up and to the right, and, and Asia kind of sinking down into the right, and Australia colliding with Antarctica again. Yeah, all we got to do now is just look at how they're moving now with GPS, hit fast forward. There you go. There you go. So there is the future world. So if you're around in 250 million years, check to see if this is uh, legit. All right, that's it. That's the end. Hopefully this stuff you kind of settle in. Make sure you're working on submitting whatever questions you may have for this lecture. Uh, and we will kind of maybe touch on some of this stuff uh, in, in class next time. Until then, I will see you around.